Hello, welcome to chapter 3 of Mathematics in the Modern World, Problem Solving and Reasoning. So there are two types of reasoning, inductive and deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is reasoning from specific information to general conclusions. It is making generalizations out of particular instances. Example, given the first premise, my math teacher is good-looking. Second premise, my last math teacher was also good-looking. Conclusion, therefore, all math teachers are good-looking. Dito, ang first premise natin or yung mga uh, statements na kinoconsider natin as the information, so meron tayong uh, specific information mula dun sa first sentence natin. Okay? Ito yung karakteristik ng subject. Sa second premise, na ulit yung characteristics na yun, pero doon sa ibang subject na. Okay? So, ang subject natin dito is a math teacher. Doon sa ating second premise is yung last math teacher. Okay? Now, itong dalawang sentence na to ay may parehas na characteristics. Given the same characteristic of the subject. Okay? That is the being a math teacher and also good looking. Since na ulit ito, sa inductive reasoning, yun yung mga in specific information natin. Okay? So, since na ulit yung mga specific information natin, nagko-conclude tayo na yung uh, mga susunod pa na pangyayari or instances ay ganun din yung kalalabasang characteristics, which is all math teachers are good looking. So, yung conclude natin ito, generalize natin that yung mga particular instances na yun ng, ng characteristics okay, ay mauulit lang din uli dun sa iba pang same uh, subject ng ating sentences which is yung math teachers. Example number 2 First premise I am a great swimmer Second premise My family live near the sea Conclusion Therefore, my son is also a great swimmer. Dito naman, given na uh, yung first premise natin ay merong karakteristik, okay, na that yung subject natin is a great swimmer. So, yun yung ating specific information. Now, ito naman, sa second premise, my family will live near the sea. Okay? So, it can be a reason kung bakit ako ay great swimmer. So then, doon sa conclusion, ang nilagay niya is the characteristic and another subject na included doon sa tinatawag nating collection ng mga subjects or ng mga objects. Given the second premise that the family live near the sea. So, ibig sabihin, kinoconclude niya rito na yung iba pang miyembro ng pamilya since ang isa ay magaling na swimmer at lahat sila ay nakatira malapit sa dagat. Therefore, yung isa rin sa member ng family, bukod dun sa unang subject natin, is also a great swimmer. Okay? So, ito ay making generalization out of particular instances. So, yung particular instance natin dito is yung pagkakaroon ng isang great swimmer sa loob ng family. Okay? So, maaaring laging tama yan or maaaring hindi lahat. Okay? Since kahit na, na, na nakatira sa dagat or nakat, since kahit na nakatira sa malapit sa dagat yung pamilya, hindi naman lahat ay pwedeng great swimmer. So, yung maaaring hindi marunong lumango yung iba. Okay? So, ang inductive reasoning is useful kung ito ay ginagamit sa mga statistical survey. Okay? Because sa uh, statistical survey, gumagamit tayo ng iba pang testing or statistical tests kung valid ba yung conclusion natin. Okay? Ito ay pagkuha ng sample lamang para i-generalize yung karakteristik ng sample na yun as a karakteristik ng general population. Okay. So, pangalawa ay in deductive reasoning. It is from general information to specific conclusion. So, kabalik tara noong ating inductive reasoning. Concluding a specific fact out of general information. 
So, ito yung ating pagkukonclude ng isang bagay out of general information. So, kung meron tayong karakteristik ng general uh, population, so, ma-inherit siya ng specific sample. So, kabalik tara nung ating inductive reasoning. Example number 1. Given the first premise, all number ending in 0 or 5 are divisible by 5. Second premise, the number 35 ends with 5. Conclusion, therefore, 35 is divisible by 5. Dito, ang general information natin is all number ending in 0 or 5 are divisible by 5. And meron tayong specific instance, 935, nag end ng 5. Then, as a conclusion, na-inherit ng 35 yung characteristics ng all numbers ending in 0 and 5, which is divisible by 5. Example number 2. Given the first premise, all squares are rectangles. Second premise, all rectangles have four sides. Conclusion, therefore, all squares have four sides. Okay, dito naman, ang given nating general information is all squares are rectangles. Dito, hindi natin sigurado kung tama ba ang sinabi. Pero mapapansin ma natin sa second premise, all rectangles have four sides, which, which is another general information. And it is a fact. Alam natin yun. So, sa conclusion natin, pwede natin i-conclude that all squares have four sides since ang squares ay rectangle at ang lahat ng rectangle ay may four sides. So, yung square na rectangle ay magkakaroon din ng four sides. Okay? So, it is always true sa deductive reasoning. So, dito, ito yung mga skills of reasoning na ginagamit ng mga detectives sa so, pagkakalap ng information to conclude kung ano man yung nangyayari sa isang kaso. Intuition, proof, and certainty. So, ang intuition is the ability to understand something instinctively without the need for con conscious reasoning. So, ito yung pag uh, meron tayong na-encounter na problem, alam agad natin kung ano yung gagawin. Okay? Because instinct ang gumagana sa atin. Okay? So, without ay conscious reasoning. So, kahit na hindi natin alam yung ginagawa natin, okay, alam natin kung paano siyang gawin. This is achieved by having previous knowledge about the topic. So, gagana lang yung inyong intuition kung may alam ka na previous, previously doon sa topic na uh, kinakaharap mo. Okay? For example, pagpapalipad ng aeroplano. So, paano ka ba magpapalipad ng aeroplano kung hindi mo pa natatry o hindi mo pa pinag-aaralan? So, you, have do you don't have a previous knowledge about that kung hindi mo pa napag-aaralan. So, hindi ka uh, makakapagpalipad ng aeroplano ng maayos or makakapag-landing. Okay? Mathematical proof or proof. It is an argument which convinces other people that something is true. But, there must be proof. Ang mathematical proof ay mga arguments or statements na nagko-convince sa iba na ang yung solution or yung sinasabi mong by means of intuition is true. So, ang mga statements na yon ay magdadagdag ng truthfulness dun sa iyong uh, stated conclusion. But, you must show a proof. So, it can be shown by writing solution or stating the facts using any types of reasoning. So, pwedeng gumamit ng inductive or deductive reasonings. Certainty. The conclusion or outcome beyond doubt. So, ito yung assured na na yung iyong uh, statement ay certainly true. Okay? Based from the arguments as proof na yung, yung statement or conclusion is verified to be undoubtedly true. So, dumako naman tayo sa problem solving. So, meron naman tayo yung Polya's four steps in problem solving. So, it, this is uh, developed by George Polya, father of modern problem solving. So, the first step is preparation. Second step is thinking time. Third step, insight. Fourth step, verification. In preparation, it is 
where kung kailan natin kailang intindihin or understand the problem. So, the key is understanding. So, sa lahat ng problem, kailangan intindihin muna natin bago tayo magbigay ng solution. So, what is being asked? So, we need to identify the unknowns or yung kung ano man yung answer na kailangan natin hanapin. And gather the given informations in the problem. So, kung ano yung mga uh, given facts or informations inside the problem ay isa-isahin natin ilista or kunin natin para magamit natin later on sa ating mga solutions. Step 2. Thinking time. Device a plan. So, dito, mag-iisip ka na ng mga iba't ibang plano kung paano mo isosolve yung problems. Kung paano mo itatakal yung problem or a, anong angle mo aatakihin. Okay. So, create possible solutions using simple problem solving strategies. So, yung mga simple problem solving strategies natin ay guess and check. So, ito yung uh, classic technique. It requires low level of effort because you can always guess an answer to a question. So, ito yung ibang tawag dito is trial and error. So, huhulaan natin and yung hinulaan nating answer is itotry natin, itotry natin kung uh, applicable ba siya. Okay. Number two is act it out. Performing a specific task to solve problem. It has very limited application like grouping a class. So, depende dun sa hinihingi sa problem kung pwede nating uh, bigyan ng action yung problem. Okay? Kung masasolve ba siya by a simple doing of action. 3. Draw or creating a drawing, a diagrams, etc. So, it uses pictures, Venn diagrams, sketches, maps, and other representations to solve mathematical problems. So, minsan, uh, sapat na yung pagdodrawing lamang or sketch lang natin kung ano yung hinihingi ng problem. For example, a location. So, pwede na tayo magbigay ng maps. So, meron tayong iba't ibang applications for giving maps, di ba? Number four, lists and tables. So, it helps discover hidden hints toward the solution of some problems and also an efficient way to find number patterns like the Fibonacci sequence. So, sa paglilista ng mga items, ay nakikita natin kung ano yung mga uh, missing, kung merong given patterns. And sa pag-create ng table, nakikita natin yung relationship between uh, sa mga op objects na ginagamit natin. Step 3, Insight. So, this is the part where you carry out the plan. So, kung ano man napili mo na problem-solving strategy, so, gagamit, gamitin mo na siya. Keep out on trying until one of your plan or approaches works for the problem. So, dito, hindi lahat ng problem-solving strategies ay applicable sa mga problem. So, you keep try until one is uh, works. Okay? Step 4 is verification. So, ito ay yung pag-check kung tama ba yung solutions mo or kung applicable ba, sumunod ba sa mga principles yung mga given solutions mo. And did you answer the question? So, sapat na ba na nasagotan mo yung tanong? Or na-double check mo na ba kung tama ba yung solutions? So, isa pa is kung applicable ba yung solution mo na ginamit at answer sa similar problems. So, there are mathematical problems involving patterns. So, many mathematical problems has predictable pattern. So, dito, so, mga problems na in math na merong involved na patterns ay may be predict because of the patterns itself. A pattern is a regular systematic representation and may be numerical, visual, or sequential. Okay? So, dahil sa pagiging regular and systematic nito, so, makikita natin that it can be predicted. Example, what is the total sum of the first 100 numbers? So, dito, given that problem, ano ba ang hinahanap? Ang hinahanap natin is the sum. And ano yung mga given? 
yung first 100 numbers. Ano-ano yung mga 100 numbers na yun? So, step 2 is, ano ba yung pwede natin gawin? So, given the first 100 numbers, pwede natin ilista yung mga numbers na yun. Okay? So, one of the possible solution is listing the numbers like this. So, given 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, up to yung pinakagitna, 49, 50, 51, 52, so on, hanggang sa ika-100. Now, ano yung makikit, pwede natin makuhang pattern? So, pwede natin i-pair yung dulo sa dulo. And, ang sum nila is 101. Ikunin naman natin yung susunod. Papasok tayo. So, 2 plus 99 is also 101. 3 plus 98 is 101 also. So, on. Hanggang sa umabot na tayo sa gitna, 49 plus 52 is 101, and 50 plus 51 is also 101. So, kung dito makikita natin that kung tayo ay magpe-pair ng numbers papaloob, okay, from sa dulo hanggang sa huling pair sa gitna na dalawa, ang saan nila lagi ay 101. So, yung ikakanta niya is 1, 2, Okay, and yung 50 to 100. So, there are 50 pairs na ang sum ay equal to 101. Okay, so 101 sila and then tayong 50 pairs. If therefore, therefore, 50 times a sum of 101, it is equal to 5,050. Or you can just add all the sums, okay, ng mga pairs na yun and it is equal to 5,050. So, we have answered the problem. So, that is the total sum of the first 100 numbers. There are recreational problems using mathematics. So, hindi lang lahat ng problems ay problem solving. So, meron ding recreational which is for leisure, for playing, etc. So, this type of mathematics is being used for leisure or recreational activity and they are called mathematical games example is yung rubik's cube so hindi lang rubik's cube ang rubik's cube ay yung pinaka 3 by 3 and mga magic cubes natin or iba pa pang patterns like this the tangram puzzle which is uh, yung given shapes na meron ay pwede nating I rearrange to create another image. So, ito yung parang sa mosaic pattern. Sudoku. Okay. So, ito ay yung pag arrange ng mga numbers from 1 to 9. Okay. So, may ilan sa inyo na alam na yung rules ng Sudoku. So, that are the examples of problems using mathematics in such ways.